After many hours of buffing all of the trail pinstripes from 2023 and a long Michigan winter, I figured it's the perfect day to do a one-year review of Thunderbolt. Hey, what's up everybody? Shannon from Warthog Overland. And today we are going to do a one-year review on my 2022 Eco Diesel Jeep Gladiator. I'm not too far from home in our little piece of paradise. There's Lake Michigan in the background. I figured it was time to do a one year review. It was a perfect place. Here we are at the end of May and summer is here. What has worked, what hasn't worked, and how do I enjoy going from a JL Wrangler to a Jeep Gladiator? I'll start off by saying I absolutely love it. And as far as complaints go, maybe I'll find some during this walk around. But offhand, I can't find a complaint. You will notice from the first walk around I did a year ago, I have changed the decals. They uh, faded over the summer and just didn't do well over the winter. Plus, buffing this out for this year, decals really don't like being buffed out. So what I've added, I will start with underneath. We have the Asfer aluminum skid plate just to protect that fuel filter that's hanging down there I've also added Rancho diff skids front and back now my rack has held up perfectly I have added some Rotopax diesel tanks. Last year's UP trip, diesel was uh, far and few where we were, so it was time to add some tanks. And the uh, bunker indust from Vic Off Road recovery boards, I did do a video on those. Those things are great. And in my first walk around video, you heard me complain about the price of this rack and the price of this back panel. But sure enough, they went on sale and I got it. And I'm very glad I did. The fridge is still running strong. It's still running off the EcoFlow. The Falcon shocks. Yeah, still worth every penny. The Clayton Overland Plus 2.5 inch lift, still worth every penny. It still rides and drives as the same as the day we installed it. I've had no goofy noises, although I do hear like a spring noise on the trail, but I may just be hearing stuff in my head. The fishbone side steps. They survived a Michigan winter. No issues. I did change my pillar lights to Nope Sight. They reached out to me and asked me to do a review, and I was sure, no problem. And those things are awesome. I am an Oxbeam fan. But as you can see, the aux beams are not on here anymore. My Amazon lights up front, though they light up everything, but they're still, they're not faring very well. 
got moisture in them this one just looks like it's uh, not a happy passenger on this side I added these amber lights for when we're out on the trail and camping they do really well they are from Amazon so they don't do very well in winters now as far as future plans go what I'd like to accomplish this year I want to get rid of this bin right there I want to build my own box I'd like to upgrade to a uh, lithium I want to do a hundred amp hour lithium battery in there I want to mount my compressor in there and a good spot for all my tools that bin works great but I just have so much more wasted space that I could be utilizing and another plan I really want to do a seat delete that is a uh, our four-year-old German Shepherd's area and as you can see we were at the Grand Haven Jeep Fest yesterday so it is kind of messy in there but I want all that gone and I am gonna DIY it I'm gonna build it myself there's a lot of plans out there that people have done really well with doing it themselves as nice as the ones you can buy those are just too expensive I haven't really done much up front I did add some more accessories from Anvil Overland I switched to the mic mount this mic mount from uh, Amazon is perfect don't remember if I had the headache panel in here before but that has been added external speaker if you have a Midland radio take advantage of plugging in an external speaker it is so nice to have right over your head and you can rock out on the trail and still hear when people talk. My experiences off-roading and overlanding with the Wrangler JL, I knew then that my dream build would be a Gladiator. I actually had my build wish list ready prior to even finding one. Knowing the breakover angle and maneuverability challenges, it didn't matter. I knew I would learn to overcome those. Having to add DEF fluid every so often hasn't been that much of a bother. And I'm still getting 18 city and 21 highway miles per gallon. And long trips are a breeze. I'll change my shock adjustments, adjust the steering to firm, and set the cruise to any speed I want with no issues. Well, those of you that do have a Jeep know that they are not equipped with the greatest of long trip sound systems. But at least the worry of getting overtaken by wind shear or the occasional pothole at 70 miles per hour, it just isn't there. This build took place a month after purchase. Now you can say I bought my way through the trails, but did I? I learned the capabilities of a stock Wrangler, 
and then I had to relearn the capabilities of a belt wrangler. So you can say I just skipped a step with this gladiator. I didn't care what it could do out of the box. I knew what it could do, and I knew what I wanted it to do. And now, it has the potential of doing things that I may never do. But I know it can, and that's all I cared about and wanted out of this gladiator. I have no complaints, no cons, no wish I would have done something different. Thunderbolt performs beyond my expectations, and I'm looking forward to see how much more we can do and the places we'll go. Please leave a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching. My name is Shannon, and this is Warthog Overland.